understand a lot of what lives on you is good and you should be good to your microorganisms, okay? How many of you guys know what the microbiome is? A little bit, okay, so you've heard about it. So the microbiome is becoming really popular in studying these microorganisms that live on skin. And so when we look at one, um, one individual type of organism, like a bacteria or fungus, we call that a microbe because it's a microorganism, a living organism. Some people classify um, uh, viruses as microorganisms, but they're not technically living, so I don't put them in that category. Um, but when we talk about microbiota, your microbiota, microbiota are the community of those organisms in any one place. So you can have a hand microbiota, you can have face microbiota. So they're different communities in different parts of your body. And I'll talk a little bit about um, that later. And when we talk about studying the microbiome, what I talk about is I'm studying that community of organisms by studying their DNA. So we know all living things have DNA. And so if I look at the DNA of these different organisms, I can figure out which organisms I have by looking at sequence of the DNA of these organisms. So when I do microbiome research, I'm studying the DNA of these organisms. And as I mentioned, a lot of these organisms are really beneficial to our health. And so they do things like detoxify chemicals on our skin. They might like, might vitamin K in our gut. Um, and so they're really beneficial to us in a lot of different ways. On your skin, they create this protective barrier. So as you're growing up, you have organisms all across your body that are not in the right place when you're little. Um, so when you're young, you know, zero, one, two years of age, the microorganisms on your skin are very variable. Um, they're very different than when you're set up in, in an adult. Um, and so as your body is changing and getting these microorganisms all across your skin, those organisms are working with your immune system to train your immune system which ones are beneficial and which ones are pathogenic. So you need these microorganisms to have a healthy immune system. And one of the problems we have now is a lot of chronic diseases, and that's potentially because we're losing some of these organisms that our body needs to work properly. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the immune system. So one of the questions I said initially was, I wanted you to think about how your behavior uh, is influenced by genetics, but how many of you think your behavior um, impacts the microbes that live on your skin? Raise your hands. Okay, so you think that your behavior, so I'll ask you that um, in a couple minutes again. Um, how many of you think that the microbes that live on your skin impact your behavior? Fewer, but a couple of you, okay. So certainly they impact your health, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how they also might influence your behavior. All right, so those of you who think that your behavior influences the microbes that live on skin, what are some of the factors that might influence the microbes that live on your skin? Maybe it's not just your behavior, it's things about you. So things live on your skin. Whether you have more or less bacteria practices, definitely. What were you saying? Okay, so if you're around healthy or unhealthy people. Yeah, that's true, I'm not going to talk about this, but there's a cloud of microorganisms around you. So the people you're sitting next to, you're getting some of the microbes from their cloud, right? And so, um, I know, so you step away from some of the people next to you, huh? So if somebody's sick, you don't want to be close to them, right? Because you don't want to pick up some of the organisms that make them sick. Okay, so there are a lot of different factors that impact the microbes that live on skin. Um, these are just some of them. There are probably a hundred different things that impact us. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that I'm doing is trying to understand which of these factors impact the microbes and how does that impact the microbes that then might play into um, which diseases you might be more or less susceptible to. And so I'm really ultimately interested in not only how host genetics impacts behavior, but how the microbial genetics, so the genes of these microbes really impacts the behavior, and then how that might um, influence your disease susceptibility as well. And so one of the places that I study is the armpit. How many of you guys have an armpit? <laughs> All right, anybody want to give me an armpit sample? All right, so sometimes I, I have you know, folks in the audience who gain to give me microbes from their armpit. Um, but why do I study the armpit? Well, one of the reasons that I just got involved in the armpit um, was because of my primate connection, so we'll get into that in a minute. But as you can imagine, um, your behavior really impacts the microbes on your skin, and your armpit is one of the main areas that impacts that, right? So if you guys go sweat and exercise, you get really sweaty, your armpits create a lot of sweat. Well, the sweat is the food source for those microbes, okay? And so if you sweat more, you have more food for your microbes, so then more microbes can grow. So what do you guys do to combat sweat so you don't sweat as much? Does anybody wear any products? You have your skin because you're wearing those products, so you A, have fewer microbes on your skin, and B, maybe sweat less, so there's not as much food for them even if they're there, okay? So you, your habits really impact microbes on your skin. Now, what's really interesting is that the microbes on your skin also impact your behavior. Okay, the microbes on your skin, I said drink your sweat and they drink your oil, and then what they give off is their waste byproducts are called volatile chemicals, and that's what creates your body odor. So your sweat is odorless, but the microbes on your body create your body odor. So who, two people who smell differently probably either have different microbes on their skin or they have eaten and had different compounds in their body that the microbes 
drugs will metabolize differently and create different byproducts to have some of the different smells. And so as many of you may or may not know, primates use scent to communicate. So if you go to the Duke Lemur Center, the lemurs can tell by smell which other animals are related to them and which animals are healthy or sick. And then they'll also use that smell to choose a mate. Okay? Right? So if somebody smells bad, you're generally not that attracted to them. If they smell good, maybe you're more attracted to them. So people you find attractive probably have smells that you like, and that's because of the microbes that live on their skin. Okay? So these microbes that live on your skin impact your behavior and probably impact mate choice. Now I said that I have this primate connection. I'm not going to talk, I'm talking a little bit about primates, but not as much as I'd like. Um, but we can talk later about more primate stuff. Um, but these primates also have microbes on their skin. And so I'm really interested in how we've co-evolved with our microbes. And so the microbes, so by studying um, the microbes that live on different primates, I can better understand which primates have which microbes and how they're similar or different to humans and how that might impact some aspects of our health and behavior and which microbes we still have left on us. So I'm going to look a little bit at um, host genes to impact the microbes on our skin, as well as how we have different glands set up on our bodies. And like I said, some of the people in the museum contribute to the research projects, and so I'll do some swabbing events, and we'll use um, one of these you know, Q-tip-like swabs that has a dual tip on it, and so I can get people to come into my um, lab, and we can swab the skin, and then collect the microbes on this swab, and then study them. And so one of the swabs we use to culture the microbes, so you can take one of these swabs off and touch it to a Petri dish, throw that up at body temperature, and what you can see is these um, plates have different things living on them. So these are from different people, Sometimes these are from both armpits of one person, and the two armpits have different things living in them. And so not only do we do the culturing step, but we also take the second swab, and then we can study the DNA of the organisms there to really better figure out what these things are. Because as you can imagine, the things that live on people don't all grow in a petri dish in my lab, right? So when we do a culturing-based step, we're missing some of the things that live on you. So using the DNA technique will give us a better picture of all the things that live on. And so one of the first studies I did with um, my postdoc is we collected samples from humans, and we also collected samples from the North Carolina Zoo, as well as from um, Puerto Rico, where I study a population of rhesus macaques on um, Cayo Santiago, a small island down there. And so from the zoo, we got chimpanzees, gorillas, and baboons. Um, and then from my study population, we had a couple of macaque samples. And you can see we have more humans in the study because it was easier to get the human samples. Um, but we compared the microbes um, of all these. And so what we have set up here is we have apes in our study and we have old world monkeys. So humans are most evolutionarily related to the chimpanzees, and those are a great ape, um, and we're less related to the old world monkeys, the baboons, and the cats. Things, but then we also collect these swabs where we can now um, not only look at the cultured organisms, but we can also um, look at the DNA of these different organisms. So we extract the DNA from all the microbes that live on the skin of these different species in the armpit. And we look at a region called the variable four region of the 16S ribosomal RNA gene. What do ribosomes 